Surprise, surprise, the Indianapolis Colts have brought back more of their internal free agents. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you all for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning of a $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Zach Hicks. I'm your favorite co-host here of the Locked On Colts podcast and also your favorite film guy over at HorseshoeHuddle.com. Now, today we have a fun show for you. We're going to be diving into the latest transactions that the Indianapolis Colts have made. It's not a ton, but, you know, there's there's something to kick this show off with that. Then we're going to dive into this crazy, crazy luxurious Sneed saga. Uh, if you guys have been following along with uh, Colts, you know, reporters, Colts uh, people on uh, social media, especially on Twitter. It's been kind of crazy. So we're going to get into that. And then we're going to talk about where the Colts go from here. You know, are they just running it back with the exact same team going into next season? We're going to discuss all that on today's show. But first, let's kick it off with the news and the reactions to that news. Obviously, we got the re-signing of defensive tackle Taven Bryan and re-signing of backup center Danny Pinter. Now, for Taven Bryan, guys, (laughs) if you guys listened to the show at all throughout last season, it was a tough year. It was a tough year uh, to watch Taven Bryan trying to play one tech for the Indianapolis Colts uh, when Grover Stewart went down with his suspension uh, for six games. It really fell on Taven Bryan's shoulders to be that guy, to be their third defensive tackle when Stewart was out there, to be their starting one tech when Stewart was suspended. And look, Taven Bryan is a fine three tech. He's a perfectly adequate, perfectly fine three technique defensive tackle. If you're putting him at one tech, you're going to have the worst run defense in football. And that's basically what happened. When Grover Stewart was out for those six games, the Colts were allowing nearly five yards a carry, one of the worst run defenses in the entire league. And and, I mean, it's not like they were playing against superstar running backs in those games. They were playing against, you know, the Saints and Taysom Hill ran all over them. They were playing against uh, the Browns without Nick Chubb and, and their backup. I think it was Ford ran all over them in that game. A lot of games where it's like, man, they just need another one tech in here. So, Yes, while this signing brings back PTSD and horrible memories of last season, just seeing him out there as a one tech, uh, when you actually you know take a mature step back and look at this signing, uh, it's a one year deal, likely a, a, a near minimum type deal uh, to actually play three technique because Raekwon Davis was signed earlier this off season. Uh, so it's not as bad a deal as what it seems like. Look, I get it. I understand the the concerns and being frustrated seeing the name Taven Bryan coming back. But if he's actually playing three tech, it's not that big a deal. I know it's it's more fun in games on social media to joke about it, but uh Taven Bryan, if he's actually playing his natural position of three tech and maybe playing just more uh passing downs rather than rundowns, he's a perfectly adequate backup three tech. He's super explosive. He's powerful. He gets out the line well. Had 12 tackles last year, had two sacks uh and a forced fumble. So it really wasn't like this horrendous season in that regard it was just man when he had to fill in for Grover Stewart at one tech it was just not pretty whatsoever but uh, I'm not too upset about it I know I made more of a fuss on social medias there but you know it's it's all fun and games over there Uh, the other signing here Danny Pinter the backup center Uh, Pinter has had a very up and down career with the Indianapolis Colts Uh, came in as a rookie fifth round pick a couple of years back uh, was a really good rotational backup center for the team. Did a lot of good things anytime he had to start a game or or come in for the injured Ryan Kelly. And then the Colts try to promote him to starter in 2022 and give him the right guard spot. I mean, he went in, he went through all of training camp really uncontested for that right guard spot. Uh, started the season at right guard, and it just was not good. It was just not a good experience for the Colts, not a good experience for Danny Pinter. He really struggled in that right guard job, and he eventually lost it to Will Fries, who's held that job ever since. Uh, But Danny Pinter was in line to be the team's backup center yet again. Last season was injured in training camp, Uh, so now he gets probably a one-year deal. I'm going to assume it's near the veteran minimum to come back, compete for a spot in camp, and, and try to solidify himself as the team's backup center again. 
Wesley French did some good things last year as a team's backup center, so that should be a good uh, contest there in camp, and we'll see if the Colts decide to add another center uh, in this upcoming draft that's just very, very loaded with center talent. Uh, so, yeah, Taven Bryan, Danny Pinter, both back. Look, that's I think that's 10 re-signings for the Colts on their, on their own internal free agents, so great to see we're bringing the boys back. All the boys are coming back, you know? Whenever you can bring back uh, everybody from a nine-win team, I really think you have to go out there and do it. <laughs> But uh, some other news and notes with the Indianapolis Colts. Yesterday, they worked out safety Mike Edwards from the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, Edwards had 70 tackles, one sack, one interception, two fumble recoveries, and five pass breakups last year for the Chiefs. Uh, he's mostly a box-type safety, but he doesn't really have the size that you want for a guy that's going to be in the box. You know, it's not uh, this guy who's going to be able to take on blocks or, or even have the quickness to go around blocks. He kind of has to be kept very clean. Uh, but he's a big hitter. He's an aggressive player, a very smart player. Uh, you just don't really see the athleticism in him. You don't really see uh, the power in him. But he's the type of guy, you know, he's like that junkyard dog type guy. He's kind of that guy who just does all the right things that he can within the best of his ability. So when people have been asking me about him, like, oh, what would he bring if the Colts did, did sign him? It's like, look, you're going to get a solid player, a good third safety, a guy you probably don't want to start. Uh, but if he is out there, you're not like screaming and crying about him being on the field. Like he's a perfectly adequate player. So if the Colts were to sign him and go into next season with him as their safety three. I think that would be perfectly fine. Now, if he was their de facto starter going into the season and then behind him, there were guys that were just not up to his quality, even behind him. That's when you get a little bit concerned there. So Mike Edwards. I wouldn't hate it whatsoever if the Colts brought him in and signed him again, Super Bowl winner last year, with the Kansas City Chiefs, good, solid player, just probably not a starter at this point or just in general, uh, but a good rotational guy, a good backup player that you can you can put some faith into. So I like Mike Edwards for what he is. Uh, and then some more safety news here. Uh, Julian Blackman is visiting the Buffalo Bills, which actually funny enough, Mike Edwards also left the Colts visit to go visit the Bills as well. So. We got multiple safeties there visiting the Buffalo Bills. Uh, but Julian Blackman, one of the very, very few out, uh, internal free agents that the Indianapolis Colts had this offseason that, that did not resign with the team. He is out there visiting the Buffalo Bills. Now, again, there could still be a reunion for the Colts and Julian Blackman down the line. But as of right now, he's starting to take visits with other teams. We'll see what happens there. We'll see if he gets an offer from the Bills or some other team out there. But uh, Blackman enjoyed a really, really nice breakout season last year, had four interceptions, uh, was one of the better players in the secondary that really struggled. And if the Colts lose him and they end up going to his backups for all of next season, we could see a, a pretty bad pass defense get even worse in 2024. So uh, we'll see what happens there with that situation if Blackman does ultimately leave the Colts or if he does ultimately resign with the Colts by the end of the offseason. I think that's all we have for news and notes, though, guys. Uh, not too much has happened uh, with the Indianapolis Colts, but uh, don't worry. Coming up, we're going to talk about the saga that captivated all of us last week and uh, was very, you know, snip, snap, snip, snap. We have no clue what's actually going on uh, with this situation, but we're going to talk all about Legereus Sneed and that entire saga that happened last week. But first, say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Who do you guys think is going to win it all this year? Do you think it's going to be Purdue? Look, all I'm saying is as someone who lives out here in Virginia, I saw Virginia lose to a 16 seed once. It was heartbreaking. It was horrible. It was embarrassing. But then the next year, they went out there and won the whole thing. Can that be Purdue? Can Purdue overcome some embarrassing losses as a one seed this year now uh, to go and win the whole thing with Zach Eady and, and the players they have? I don't know. You guys can go to FanDuel and tell me what you think. So again, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 
All righty, Locked On Colts listeners, let's try to break down this Legereus Sneed craziness. Let's start at the beginning. Legereus Sneed, very, very good outside cornerback who plays a little bit in the slot with the Kansas City Chiefs. He has won back-to-back Super Bowls with the Chiefs. Fantastic player. Uh, he doesn't have any All-Pros or Pro Bowls to his name, uh, but really he is a fantastic player. I, I really, really recommend go watch his film. He does some great things there for the Chiefs, and he was franchise tagged by the Chiefs this offseason, and they're pretty far apart in their contract negotiations. The Chiefs have a lot of contracts coming up in Creed Humphrey and Nick Bolton, just to name two of them. Uh, so it, it's in their best interest to, you know, send Snead to a different team and get some draft capital back and kind of replenish the the youth that they have there at that team. Uh, and while they've been shopping Legereus Snead, we know one team that has come up as being interested is the Indianapolis Colts. So Stephen Holder uh, of ESPN covering the Colts uh, reported, I think right before free agency started or around the time free agency started, he reported the Colts have inquired about Legereus Snead, that they were one of the teams that has contacted the Kansas City Chiefs, which I know riled all of us up. We all got really excited. Was this going to be the big Chris Ballard move? Uh, and then after free agency started, we got these these tons of reports from different people saying that the Sneed trade to Indy was done. It was happening. Uh, we got Destin Adams from A to Z Sports, one of my colleague, one of my former colleagues here at HorseshoeHuddle.com. And then we got two other guys, Captain Colt and this guy named Ricky, uh, all on Twitter. Uh, again, I can't speak to the veracity of Captain Colt or uh, even Ricky, even though that Ricky guy seemed to get a lot of uh, free agent stuff correct. So I, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but all of them were reporting that the Sneed trade was done, that it was happening. It was pending paperwork and, and contract negotiations with Sneed's camp. And Legereus Sneed was going to be an Indianapolis Colt for 2024. Then uh, later that same day, Stephen Holder, again of ESPN.com, uh, shoots that report down. And then he says that he leans toward the trade not happening at all. Nothing was close to finalized. And it wasn't likely that it was going to happen. So then a couple of days go by. And we're still not really hearing much on what's happening. Uh, I know Destin and, and Captain Colt and those guys did say that a snag came up in the contract negotiations and and they still expected the deal to get done. But it was, you know, a snag came up and it's not uh, really going the way they expected. Uh, Diana Rossini was on the Athletic podcast and she reported that the Colts and Titans were both very, very close on deals uh, with the Chiefs for Legereus Sneed, but Sneed's contract demands were really the hold up there. Uh, I, I know I saw at some places that Legereus Sneed was, was asking for four year contract up to $22 million plus per year uh, to reset the cornerback market, which Again, we've talked about it here on this podcast. That's kind of crazy for a guy who has never made a Pro Bowl, never been an All-Pro, and has a knee issue. I, I know there have been some people with the Chiefs finally talking about that knee injury. Uh, that is you know, scaring some teams a little bit there. So Rossini does, again, mention that the Colts and Titans were very close on deals. But again, the contract was the holdup. And then, all out of nowhere, Adam Schefter goes on the Pat McAfee show uh, on ESPN and reports that the Colts and Chiefs had no communication about Legereus Need, that there just wasn't any communication there. Uh, and then Stephen Holder added to that by saying that the Colts never really got past the, the phase of inquiring about Legereus Need. Uh, it was mostly just inquiring, and then they pivoted to Kenny Moore, uh, and that was it. They they really didn't make an offer. They never really talked with Sneed's camp. Uh, so we have a whirlwind of reports coming here from done deal. It's happening. The Colts are going to get luxurious need to no, no, no. They never talked whatsoever to, you know, all these things here. How do we sort through this information to see what's correct? I don't think many people here are outwardly lying. Uh, I mean, one of them probably is, and I'm not going to say his name in particular, but one of these people is probably outwardly lying, but the rest I think can be all true at the same time. Uh, for for Stephen Holder, I, I think a lot of his stuff is obviously true. I think a lot of what he was saying, where the Colts did inquire, I think they did call the Chiefs and and they did have some conversations, but I don't know how far it actually went. Uh, I don't disagree with what Destin and, and all these other guys are saying uh, that maybe they did agree to the rough outline of a trade deal, and it really came down to that contract negotiation. I mean, D Diana Rossini did basically confirm that on the Athletic Pod as well by saying that the Colts were fairly close. Uh, so, I, again, I don't think many people here are outwardly lying and, and saying contradicting things. But at the end of the day, we're at the point where we're going into week two of free agency. We're in the middle of week two here of free agency. The Colts don't have much cap space to work with. I know they have a little bit more than what's being reported, but it's still not a ton. So if they were to make a trade for Legereus Need, they'd have to move around a lot of money. 
uh, to make that work, which the Colts typically don't do. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I think at this point it's safe to say it's probably not going to happen. Uh, whether that is because of Legarius needs contract demands, whether that's because you know the Chiefs are wanting too much, whether that's because the Colts never contacted them at all, you know, I, I think it's safe to say it's probably not going to happen at this point. I mean, for my two cents, again, I don't hear nearly as much, and I'm not even trying to say that I'm more of an insider than any of these guys at all. Uh, but I do know somebody who's close with the Chiefs, and and they did say that. Uh, the Titans were very close to acquiring Snead, but at the end of the day, they didn't want to send Snead to the Titans. And the Colts tried to come in during those conversations and offer a little bit lower of a of a deal to the Chiefs. The Chiefs didn't really go for that at all. And then the Colts pivoted to Kenny Moore. That That is what I heard early in the process, and I didn't really hear much more after that. I just heard that the Colts immediately after making that offer for Snead did sign Kenny Moore back to the team. And then I hadn't heard anything else about them talking to LeJerry Snead. So that's my two cents. That's what I heard. I, I'm not even trying to contradict anything else that anybody else said or how much further it got from there. Uh, but I do know that they signed Kenny Moore soon after reaching out for their first offer to the Kansas City Chiefs for LeJarrius Sneed. So take that for what you, what you will with that. Uh, but now what? Like what happens with LeJarrius Sneed? I don't know, man. I, I really don't know because it doesn't seem like he's going to play on the tag with the Chiefs this year. A trade still seems like the most likely thing for him, but I don't think there's a team out there that's going to pay him that twenty-two million plus dollars per year. Uh, it, it's a it's a hefty, hefty contract over four years. Probably wants you know the the most guarantees at the cornerback position as well. And look, if we're talking. Like, like if we're comparing him to Jalen Jones or Jalen Johnson, Jalen Johnson was a free agent this offseason, 24 years old, coming off an all pro season, the Chicago Bears. And regardless of what you think, like who you think is the better player between Snead and, and Johnson, Johnson has the accolades and accolades and the youth over LeJarrius Snead. And he got paid what, like an average of 19 to 20 million dollars per year and with, with very good guarantees. So now you have a player like Snead who's a little bit older, who has lingering injury issues that that hampered him all last season. I know he played through pretty much all of them, but he still has those injury issues. It's part of the reason why the Chiefs don't want to pay him. Uh, and he wants more than that and more guarantees. It, it's a very tough negotiation. And I understand a team like the Colts or somebody else not wanting to, to give that kind of contract to a guy like Snead. Now, Am I saying that means the Colts not shouldn't make a big splash this offseason? No, I'm not saying that at all. And I know a lot of you guys are going to comment on here and be frustrated that the Colts somehow didn't get it done with, with Jerry Snead. I totally get it because, look, you have the rookie quarterback contract. You have a big need at corner. And Snead seemed like a really great addition for this team. Uh, so I understand all sides of it here. I understand the frustration. I understand the craziness with the reporting and, and just the, again, the the snip snap of the of the whole week we just had last week. But um, I think the best way I can speculate right now is that it's probably not going to happen. The Colts, if they make any other moves the rest of this offseason, it's going to be more minor type deals. Like they still could bring in a veteran corner and a veteran safety, but it's not going to be at the top of the market, guys. Like I don't think it's going to be Justin Simmons. I don't even think Quandre Diggs is probably likely at this point because those are just going to be expensive options. Steven Nelson might be an expensive option at corner too. I think it's going to be more league minimum-ish deals to get them to the draft. And then they're going to rely on the draft to replenish uh, the youth on defense and try to just get younger and faster and more athletic there on defense. I don't think we're going to get the veteran signings on defense that we all wanted this offseason. And instead, they're kind of resorting to running it back with a lot of the guys they had last year. So whatever you really think about that is up to you. I'm not here to, to put an opinion in your head about that one way or another in this segment. The next segment, I will. I'll put a little bit of an opinion there. Uh, but that that's kind of my take on the luxurious needs stuff. I, I don't think any reporter here was outwardly lying to us. I don't think anybody was being very like disingenuous here. Well, one person maybe, but <laughs> the rest I don't think were being very disingenuous. I don't think Destin was saying anything harmful or or trying to do things. For, I, I think he genuinely did believe that the deal was close to being finished. I, I also believe Holder in saying that it was maybe even more inquiry or inquiry with that. I, I, I believe Diana Rossini that the Colts got it close. Like, I don't think anyone here is outwardly lying to us. I just think that there's very different takes on this situation to, to get us to the same place we're at now where, look, it, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, look, LeJarrius Snead is still part of the Chiefs. A trade could still happen. 
I, I, I firmly believe the Colts will still have that open line of communication about it if Snead's price ever drops, but we'll see. We will see what happens with that scenario, but that's where we're at right now with the Legere Snead saga. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from now, uh, goes from this point now. Uh, but coming up, we're going to talk about where the Colts go from here. You know, they're, they're basically running it back with all the same guys. Is that good enough to get it done in the AFC in 2024? We're going to talk about that here in just a second. But first, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy help makes therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. I've not personally used BetterHelp, guys, but I've used therapy quite a bit in my life. Uh, and, and look, just to find, again, the special thing that, that I need to focus more on, to find that, that crutch that I need to lean on to get me to where I need to be. Uh, for a lot of things, therapy has been a fantastic service for me, and BetterHelp is the is the convenient and flexible way to do it online nowadays. So again, BetterHelp is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Uh, learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. All righty, my beautiful everydayers, we are back with our final segment on today's show talking about where the Colts go from here. Like, again, let's assume they have missed out on LeJarrius Sneed. They've missed out on Kendall Fuller at corner. They've missed out on a handful of safeties as well. So where do the Colts go from here in free agency? Where do they go from here the rest of the offseason? And what are we really looking at with this team? Now, I could sit here and I could list off all the veteran free agents that I still like at corner and safety, like we've been doing on this show for the past, you know, two weeks, you know, Oh, you know, whatever Kendall Fuller signed, but don't worry. This guy's out here. Oh, Cam Curl signed at safety, but don't worry. This guy's out here. I could sit here and do that, but I think we all kind of know what direction this is going in with the Indianapolis Colts. They're probably not going to sign many more free agents. If anything, they will maybe sign again, like a veteran corner, like an Akilah Witherspoon type, or maybe a veteran safety, like a Mike Edwards type, like we talked about earlier. Like we might get that, but I, I don't really, I, like I really wouldn't hold my breath for any of those type of signings. I do think ultimately the Colts are trying to to kind of run it back with, with what they did last year. I think they firmly believe on the inside, like, hey, as long as we can get our core guys back, our, you know, Kenny Moore, our Michael Pittman Jr., our Grover Stewart, get those type of guys back and have a healthy Anthony Richardson, and have more, you know, more health at corner, more health at running back. This team can be a playoff team, and we can see where they are going from here. We can really evaluate where Anthony Richardson is going from here. I don't think that's necessarily a bad plan, but I don't necessarily think it's a great plan either. Because when you're looking at this team, you know the defensive backfield is still a complete mess. Uh, projected starters right now are Juju Brents, Kenny Moore, who's who's outstanding. I'm not trying to say anything bad about Kenny Moore. Uh, Jalen Jones, Rodney Thomas II, and Nick Cross. You know, for, for Juju Brents, obviously you can't close the book on him. Uh, very injury-plagued rookie season, but showed some good things. Uh, Jalen Jones, again, like a, a former seventh-round pick last year, did a lot of good things in his rookie season, but at the end of the day, kind of showed that it was a little early to be starting him. Maybe he makes a big jump in year two, but... Again, we haven't seen enough on film to say that he's going to make that big jump in year two. And then looking at the safeties, I mean, Nick Cross is going into his third season. He's only started a handful of games, and, and it was really a struggle towards the end of last season when he did start. Uh, Rodney Thomas was benched in the final couple weeks. Uh, he actually was splitting a lot of time with Cross late in the season. And then when Ju Julian Blackman went down and, and you know there was an opportunity to start both Cross and Thomas, they gave it to Ronnie Harrison, who was a linebacker convert. They put him back at safety instead of starting Rodney Thomas. So that kind of speaks to, you know, the Colts trust in Rodney Thomas right now. So again, when you're looking at this cornerback room, this is just not an NFL ready cornerback room. It's very similar to last year. And last year's past defense was really bad because of their, their, their defensive backfield. Uh, so I, I do think there's a lot of issues with the defensive backs. And again, for people saying like, oh, look, they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. You know, veteran doesn't really do too much. Yeah, but if your goal is playoffs, if your ultimate goal is playoffs, this this defensive backfield is just not good enough. 
it's not good enough. Even if you add a, a young guy to this group, it's probably not good enough to get to, I don't know if to even get you to the playoffs, but certainly not to do much when you get into the playoffs. Uh, unless these guys make big jumps and maybe they do make big jumps. Maybe Chris Ballard's, uh, you know, his go-to catchphrase of we like our guys. We like our guys. We like what we have in that group. Maybe it'll finally pay off this time. But we see this way too often with Chris Ballard where we go into drafts with big holes at certain positions and they get addressed in the draft. And then we're asking these super young players to come in and be the answer from day one. I mean, we saw it with Quiddy Pay in his draft. We saw it with Michael Pittman Jr. in his draft. And even he wasn't ready in year one to be the savior of that position. Uh, we saw it last year with, I mean, Richardson is one, obviously, but Juju Brents. We saw it even with Jalen Jones last year where it's like, hey, seventh round pick, come out here and, and play some significant snaps for us and save our cornerback room. It's just too much like this. We, we get this all the time. So now instead of being able to go into this draft and sitting at 15, which is a premium pick, a very, very good pick to have in this class, very top-heavy class, a lot of good players early on, especially if a lot of quarterbacks go in front of the Colts, they're going to have a lot of guys they can take there at 15. But when your cornerback room and your safety room looks, looks like they do right now, you're kind of pigeonholing yourself to taking a corner at 15. So, like, again, Quinion Mitchell is great. I love Quinion Mitchell, and I would be over the moon to take him at 15. Same with Terry on Arnold. I'd be over the moon to take him at 15. I think they're fantastic players. But if it ultimately comes down to where those guys are sitting there and a Brock Bowers is sitting there, and if you actually addressed it, uh, the cornerback position going into this, you know, going into the draft, you could be comfortable to take that, that blue player in Brock Bowers and really make your offense you know, go crazy with him. Uh, but because you just don't have the talent at corner, it becomes drafting for need and for talent. And, and you're going to, you're going to push that need up a little bit higher than just the talent. And you're going to, you know, you could potentially be passing on a better player because you have to take a corner early in this class. Or maybe you think, Oh, we have to trade back now because our top two corners are gone. Even if a Brock Bowers is there, we have to move back because corner has to be our first pick because we need a corner in this draft. And I know I'm speaking a lot of hypotheticals here, but I just, me personally, I hate going to the draft being forced to select something early. And it feels like that's where we're going with corner. It feels like we'd be going that way with safety as well. If this were even a remotely good safety class, it's not a good safety class at all, uh, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, but yeah, that's my little rant about this off season, but I do want to take a slight step back as well. Breathe a little bit. You know, we're going to do some meditation here at the end of this, this episode and, and, you know, put things in perspective. This, this was, a fine off season. They got back a lot of their big free agents that they potentially could have lost that would have led to this team downgrading and being much worse next year. They got a lot of those guys back. They kind of stayed the course. Hopefully Richardson comes back healthy and outside of defensive backs, you know, there's not many issues with this team. They have hopefully their quarterback of the future. They have a superstar running back. They have their number one wide receiver locked up and another young player in Josh Downs who they like. Jelani Woods is hopefully coming back. Their offensive line is in a good spot. Defensive line was pretty solid last year, and, and those guys are still, you know, doing good things. Their linebacker group is pretty good. This is not a bad team on paper. It's just it felt like there was a chance to go above and beyond with this team and not roll into the draft with a big need at some position. Now they're rolling to the draft saying, okay, we need corners and safeties early, get more youth at those positions. And if it causes us to bypass players like Brian Thomas Jr. or Brock Bowers or Adonai Mitchell, you know, any of those type of guys, so be it. We're going to take corner. We're going to take safety. Um, that's where really I draw the line with this off season and get a little frustrated, but overall it is what it is. It's not, you know, it's not a bad off season by any means. It's just very, it's a very stagnant off season for a team that feels like it should be ascending. They're kind of staying in the same pace and it's just hoping for development instead of taking the initiative and trying to push it a little bit higher than what it is. But you guys can let me know in the comment section. Do you feel like this was a bad off season, a great off season, a, a terrible, you know, a, a very average one? Like I think, uh, what do you think about this off season? Also, let me know what you think about the Legarius Sneed stuff because that was um, just a crazy, crazy week last week. <laughs> that was that was really insane to watch there. Uh, before we get out of here, though, I do want to remind you guys that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports twenty four seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on 
on the free Fire TV channels app. And also before you guys go today, I do want to remind you that the Indie Draft Guide's pre-orders are now open. For $8.99 with code DRAFTMIS and all caps, you get access to an essential piece of reading for Colts fans both before and after the draft, featuring 225 in-depth scouting reports, features, and much more. Click the link in our show notes for pre-order today. And before we get out of here, guys, I want to remind you, if you don't already, follow at Locked on Colts, at Jake Arthur NFL, and at Zach Hicks 2 all on social media. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcast. We love you guys, rings, your views, and we'll catch you guys back here, maybe bright and early <laughs> tomorrow morning. We're, we're going to talk Colts, Colts regardless, guys. It doesn't matter what time of day. <laughs>